Hi, it's Robbie from Southern California, and I'm going to talk about something that's been very disturbing to me. Not the rooster. I see a lot of this on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook and all over, and I want you to understand that this is going to be a very strong opinion of mine. You know my policy, I don't tell people what to do when it comes to gardening, when it comes to hummingbirds, wild birds, animals, anything. We all do things that work for us. My little one's waiting for me back there, Zoe. What's going on right now is scaring me because they don't, I think people don't realize they're not doing a service for the hummingbirds. So, let me briefly show you a clip. And this is one of many of what's going on. And as you can see here, the birds are frantically, frantically looking for food. It's probably getting close to sundown. They're trying to get food, they're desperate. And if you look carefully, I'll play it off and on throughout this video. You'll see that they're not actually feeding they're trying to feed and that's what breaks my heart here where i am feeding birds and i'll swing around so you can see behind me we have multiple feeders around i've got feeders here and flowers but the main thing is i do have feeders everywhere i've got them in the garden i've got them all over my deck here i've got them in my window because when i see the birds coming in i want to know they have a seat and a lot of my feeders have more than 10 seats the ones you just saw had four. I've seen other videos where they put out feeders that have two seats with hundreds and hundreds of birds coming. Here's the thing I think they may not understand. A hummingbird's life is very fragile. They're smart, but their life can be taken at a split second. Every day of their life, they're 15 minutes away from ending their life. Let's put it that way. If they don't get enough food by the end of the day, when they go into the torpid state and they go to sleep, they are not gonna wake up. They're not like other birds that can get sick, not feel well, not find enough food. They'll just go to sleep, sleep it off, get up in the morning and start hunting around for worms or seeds or whatever. Look at how they fly. Think of how fast their heart beats. So fast, it's incredible. And when these birds are fluttering around like that, they're burning off all their energy. And by the time they get any food, it may not be enough for them in the evening. I would have felt more comfortable had I seen them coming in and sitting, taking a drink, eating what they want, taking off back into the wilderness or into the plants and then coming back for another drink. But they're not. And when people set up their feeders like that, what's ending up happening, I've got hummingbirds all over my head, is they're frantic and they're panicking. And by the time they even get something to drink and something to feed on, it's not gonna be enough. They've already burned off two or three times the amount of what they needed for this. If you have birds coming through like that, and I know the average person has one to 10, 15 birds at their home, but if you've got that many coming through, you've got to really stop and think about what's going on with them and put out as many feeders as you can. Separate the feeders too. Don't have them just in a long line like that if they're that frantic. Separate them so they can wait for their time to get some food. That would be a solution. And if you can't keep up with that, and it's too much, and there's so many birds and they're frantic, not feeding, it would be better off for the birds if you removed the feeders. Don't leave them empty. Oh my gosh. If you left feeders there that you were feeding your birds all the time, even behind me, if those feeders were there and they were empty, the birds will hang around till the end of their life because they're waiting for the flower, the plant that they depend on each and every day to have food in there. You would be better off to remove them. So when they come through and there's nothing there, they're going to leave. They're going to see their flower, their plant, the reliable source of food isn't there. And the next thing they'll do is go to someplace else that they know of. They'll forage around the gardens, but they'll get something to possibly hold them over till the next day. Otherwise, what they're doing is they're going to someplace familiar, like your home, your porch, your patio, whatever. And then they're 
feeding every day and then all of a sudden they can't get in or there's no food, that's when there's a bigger problem. That's why I'm forever filling feeders for the birds because they depend on me. Sure, feeders run out. I've got dozens of feeders around here and periodically some of them do run out. But what I do at that point is I make sure there's always food in other feeders and then I go through and swap them out with feeders that are cleaned and ready to be put out. There's dozens of feeders. So if two or three run out, they'll find another feeder. They'll know where there's food somewhere else. But when they come in to an area like that and they're depending on you and the feeder is there, they think they're doing something wrong. Oh, I must not be getting it at the right spot. Or maybe it's on this little feeder part, you know, because those only had four feeders. Some of them only had two. Mine have anywhere from 10 to 16 per feeder. And that's why you see mine sit comfortably. Why do they not fight? Because they don't come in in a panic. They don't come in thinking there's not gonna be food for them. They know if they have to wait five minutes, they're gonna have food. They feel secure. If your birds feel secure, then they're going to hang around and they're gonna to wait to make sure that there's a seat for them. But when they're not secure, they're desperate, that's when you get a lot of fighting. Mine don't have to fight. As you can probably see, let me move over and see if you can see behind me. They've been feeding all morning. So if they want to wait till I leave, that's fine too. And there they are. I try to mix it up by adding in some flowers. This is not, you know, the best. The best flower would be a penstemon, which is here, or a salvia. They get nectar out of them, but they get pollen from different flowers. So you can add flowers in as well. The point is, I have enough feeders for security. So if you're going to feed hummingbirds and you're going to feed a lot of hummingbirds, please, if you see the panic, put anything out. They'll even drink out of a bowl if they're desperate enough. They'll look and watch what you put out. You can put a shallow bowl out, pour some nectar in there. Remember, if you're making homemade nectar, it's a quarter of a cup of white granulated sugar and one cup of water mix well together and then put it out after it's completely dissolved. You can make it the day before and put it in the fridge, or you can add in some warm water when you start and top the rest of it with cold water. That's the only thing you wanna put in there. No vitamins, no juice, no jam, no jelly, no honey, because that will end their life as well. Make them know that no matter what, there's gonna be food for them. It's a smorgasbord that's not running out, and you will have happy birds, and don't let them go into a panic. Because I look at that and I think half of those birds, if they're on a migrating journey, they may not make it. And that happens if they run out of food. Think of the super bloom. I can tell you for a fact, I didn't want to get into it, that a lot of my hummingbirds from the super bloom didn't make it back. Think about it. They went out there, there was flowers they were foraging through, and then all of a sudden the flowers died back. They tried to journey back to where they came from but this time, this year, their duty was to pollinate the wildflowers. It wasn't about them living. It was about them doing what they're supposed to do. They're pollinators. They go into my vegetable garden. They pollinate flowers, tomatoes, peppers, moringa, all the different flowers they'll go into and they'll collect pollen. And while they're doing that, they're pollinating. So let's protect our hummingbirds. Let's keep their numbers up, offer them some food, and don't make them drink in a panic. Let's help these little guys out. They're precious and let's try to make sure they're comfortable and they can enjoy us as we enjoy them. So with that, have a wonderful day and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. There are so many hummingbirds this morning, it's unreal.